Hi, I'm Lise Colucci, one of the life coaches at Queen. I'm here to talk about issues around narcissistic abuse and how it affects you as a survivor. Today, I talk about being silenced by the narcissist and what that feels like and the effects it has and also different ways narcissists use to silence you. If that sounds good, hit subscribe and let's go. I asked a group of survivors about what it was like to be silenced. If they were silenced by the narcissist, how they feel now, how they feel about their own voice and their ability to be heard and feel heard. Many people described the shutting down of communication, that they just eventually got to the point where they couldn't talk anymore. They didn't feel heard. They knew that every time they spoke, they were going to be misquoted. The narcissist would gaslight or they would be basically accused of something, treated horribly every time they voiced an opinion about any matter whatsoever. So they basically shut down and they quit talking. And what that set up was the inability to feel heard in all of life and to the inability to feel validated in what they actually think within themselves. So I want to look at a couple of these and read you a few examples of what I'm talking about. A really simple one sentence quote that speaks volumes is after a while, you just stop talking and you realize that your words and feelings don't mean a thing. That I think sums up a lot of what it feels like to be silenced. And so let's look at some ways the narcissist might do that. One person describes how they would continually have the same argument over and over for years, that nothing was ever resolved and nothing ever came of it. It was like spinning in the same circle over and over. And after a while, they just quit talking. And so that set up them not talking at all ever about anything that matters and feeling like they lost their opinion and their voice. That's kind of a form of stonewalling when you can't get anywhere in an argument or a discussion with someone and it just spins and spins and you feel like you're putting in the effort to understand them, but they're not making the same effort back. It's like basically they're building a stone wall around themselves or they're building a stone wall around the situation so they don't have to look at it. And that can totally shut you down because there's nothing it is. It's a shutdown. There's nothing you can say or do to change the situation, to help the situation or to make the situation better so the relationship can grow. It basically just ends all communication right there. One person describes it as that she learned what not to say because he would do the opposite of whatever it was. And she would not call him out on a lie because the rage wasn't worth it. If she talked about her feelings, it was also a no-no. What's the point if you're just going to be told you're mentally ill and your feelings aren't real? So you see, by gaslighting you and making you believe that what you feel isn't real, they basically, in effect, silence you completely because then you have even your inside beliefs, even what's going on in your head is not accurate in, from what they're telling you. And the more that happens, the more you believe it, or at least parts of you believe it. And there's also a part inside of you screaming, no, that's not the truth. So you learn that by saying something out loud about it, it's going to do you no good. And because of the situation, you just shut down. You shut down and you stop talking. So gaslighting is another way that the narcissist will use to silence you. Another person describes how it's like being trained to be silent because anything you say, they'll punish you for or give you the silent treatment or gaslight you or, or give you hurtful comments. If you keep your mouth shut, things go a lot smoother or they go well, depending on the situation. At least it can diffuse a rage attack or an argument or a gaslighting or, or a tantrum of any kind. So yes, you're being groomed the whole time to hold your peace and not talk and be silent. Another person describes an interesting situation where they feel like they lost their, their self-awareness and the ability to speak freely and they felt stuck at the mental age they were when they met the narcissist. They felt like they remained like a child with no voice. And they asked, how did they go from knowing their own mind to not knowing who they were? 
that's an interesting point. They groom you again to stay in the role that they want you in. So if they need you to be that certain age so that you look to them for all the answers and therefore you don't have a mind to speak and they don't have to deal with another human being and another human being's needs and wants and thoughts and beliefs and feelings, then it makes a lot of sense why they would groom you to keep you that way. And Grooming is a slow process. It's not something like you wake up one morning and you're groomed. It's, it takes time and it's a slowly built process where you agree to something, boundaries get pushed, you agree to something and boundaries get pushed and this goes on and on. And the increments are so tiny that you don't even know it's happening. Or they'll hit you with love bombing and the love bombing will be so inviting or so much what you need to hear right that moment that it slowly grooms you to believe that is what that narcissist is, that person is there to offer you or that person is giving you when in fact they're just putting into play what they're going to shape later on so if they need you to be a certain mental age like if they need you to behave like a child then they will groom you to not trust your own intuitions, not trust your own abilities, your own capabilities, slowly and over time, and to rely on them for those things so that you look to them instead of looking to yourself. And that is one way you can completely lose yourself. So you can regain that back, and understanding that that's happened gives you the opportunity to regain and to grow and to surpass who you think you even could become. Because it sounds like you have self-awareness now if you're seeing this point in yourself and this experience that you had. Um, I would say that self-care, taking self-care as a lifestyle, taking yourself seriously and taking your healing seriously is one way to grow up that part of yourself. This is not a process that just goes away. We do have to actively engage in our own healing and a lot of times especially when it's to the point where you completely feel lost you actively have to engage with tuning back into yourself and striving for the things that you want which is healing and self-love and feeling empowered again another person has an interesting thing to say and that is the rail rock that they use with the narcissist and the dissociation that they feel from the whole experience and from the abuse makes them feel silenced. That, yeah, that is a combination for a silencing. So what I would suggest with that is to look at when you gray rock, what you're actually feeling, what you're experiencing. Look to yourself and validate it before you gray rock. I mean, as you're gray rocking, really. You know, when you shut down on the outside, there's still at life going on on the inside. When you shut down the reaction to the narcissist, you still have an opinion and you still have a voice that wants to be heard. So you have to hear it yourself. You, you can tune inward toward your belief and you can affirm, I know my truth or I know what I believe. Things like that can really help you to at least feel like you've heard yourself. And regaining a voice it takes time and it takes, you know, different efforts and, and seeing where it is that you have been silenced. And I think that's a great, again, a great self-aware moment to realize that the dissociation and the gray rock combined have created this silenced feeling within you. Um, you can work on dissociation. There are a lot of techniques and I have one video on it. And I'm sure Angie has a bunch on that as well, because it's a great tool to keep you safe when you're being abused, but it is not a way to live for the rest of your life. So finding your way out of that and finding a way to feel again, my approach tends to be through self-care and through self-awareness. And, you know, I do have a self-care coaching group, and that's one of the issues that comes up and that we talk about how do, how do you feel again? How do you feel heard again? How do you find a voice? So this is all part of what comes up in the group, in the self-care group as well. So that's another avenue to explore if that's something you wish to do or can do in your life. Another person talks about how they're afraid to say anything 
because anytime something anytime something was wrong with the relationship or in life it would always start a fight if they voiced their concern or they would get guilt tripped and they would be told they were rude and thoughtless and selfish so they just didn't say anything and then later they got blamed for not letting him in their heart you know that <laughs> That's like this classic game of push-pull that the narcissist does, where they will absolutely stonewall any attempts at communication that's uncomfortable. Communication that forces them to look at themselves. Even if you have to look at yourself too, they want all the blame to be shifted onto you. And by not accepting the blame and being silenced, then you're cold or you're rude or whatever their term is and you're and you're hurting them and you're not letting them in their heart your heart the narcissist needs the drama of the devalue they need the good and the bad and the hot and the cold that's why they do it because they need it everything they do is based on their own needs and want and yes it's very silencing again because how, you can't say anything you can't even reply to them saying you're cold because you know if you do it's just going to create that cycle of argument or devaluing yet again one person describes being told they were too optimistic and that that was a problem and if they were quiet and less optimistic i suppose then that was a problem as well and their words at the end is the best part control 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 that's the name of the game yep that's the name of the game it's all about control it's about controlling their world and because we're in it, we're the pawns in their world. They need that control to feel the power of their own ego. And that controlling nature, just the controlling aspect of it, will shut down anybody else in its wake and take away your voice. It'll take away your ability to feel heard and validated and like you matter in the situation or you matter in the relationship. One person talks about the long-term effect of being with a narcissist for a longer duration and that it took years, but they finally just stopped trying and that it was a struggle because they had to learn to pick their battles. And obviously that most of the things that the narcissist gets upset about are not worth the battle. And so therefore you're shutting down all the time. And they said, I learned not to speak what I thought or felt, to have it minimized, rejected, and abused. And that is coming from someone who knows how to speak what she feels, is a writer, and can express herself in words. It shut down the nature of her creativity. And to me, that's an attack on many fronts when that happens. Yeah, I think when they get in to a to the part of you that is able to express very freely and suddenly you can't. It's sort of like when a very giving empath suddenly has nothing left to give and all of that will be restored as you heal. And in fact, you may find a wiser and deeper voice in your writing. You may find that you have more compassion and empathy in your writing than you even did before. And you may find that your topics and your subject matters have more depth and wisdom as you go. I say give yourself time to heal and allow your creativity to be restored because it will. You will you'll come back. You're, the writer's still in there and she's just being quiet for a little while while, it, while, she, while the rest of you heals and catches up with her. Another way a narcissist will silence you is by ignoring you when you talk had multiple people describe being completely ignored, being talked through, being talked over, only being allowed to talk during commercials, being told shh, shh, all the time, being ignored when they're speaking, and that like as if the narcissist doesn't even hear them when they're talking. That's like when the narcissist gets to the point where they no longer give you the love bombing. For a lot of people, that's like, when the narcissist gets to the point where there's no longer love bombing and all you're getting are crumbs. And so most of your life, you live in a state of devalue and you're just completely silenced. And it really makes me feel like I'm watching an old episode of all in the family or something. And, and the wife is being told 
to, to, to stow it and to shut up. And ah, it's infuriating. It's infuriating to hear and to read that. However, you can now move forward. This narcissist is no longer in your life. If they are, you know what you need to do. And getting out, if they are, I'm hoping that by hearing all of this, you can see that this is not just you. This is a very common thing for a narcissist to do. In fact, it's part of narcissistic abuse. Being silenced is a huge thing for survivors to overcome when they leave a narcissist. And I'm hoping that if you are still with one, you can see it's, you're not alone and that this is not you. It's a thing that they do and there are a lot of reasons why they do it and there are a lot of methods in which they do it. So I'm going to move on. Another thing that was said that is a way a narcissist will silence you is that they have two faces. They have their public face and their private face. And the public face usually is one that everyone thinks they're the nice guy. And their whole family might think they're just wonderful or their friends may think they're wonderful and you know the truth and how you're being treated. After you leave, that narcissist might smear you. And that smear campaign completely shuts down your voice because you can't say anything. The more you talk, the deeper the hole is that you get dug into. And so you can't even defend your stance and you can't even say, he treated me horribly because they have the rest of the world convinced that they are the good guy. Or at least it seems that way. Most of the times they don't actually have the rest of the world convinced. It's just that people don't want to be bothered and they let it go because it's not so intimate in their life. It's not so important in their own life. But the smear campaign and the silence it creates can be extremely frustrating and can be terrifying. It can be, it can be life-changing because there is nothing you can say to, to get out of it. I mean, really the best thing for most times during a smear campaign is when people ask you a question about it is just to say, if you know me, you know what's true. And that's it. And if you say more than that, or if you say a whole lot or say that over and over, it just looks like you're defending yourself from something you did wrong because of the way the narcissist sets up the smear campaign. So yes, that's a big way they silence you. And they silence you into not exposing them, really. Usually time will tell. And the people that matter, and the people that will stand by you are the ones you want in your life anyway. I can't tell you how many people said, mine said, shh, again, with the shh. There's nothing more. I mean, that is like the most degrading sound you can say to someone. A narcissist can make it seem like you don't matter because your position in life is not one that is as high as theirs or you're not as educated or you're not as smart or you're not as rich or successful of a person as they claim to be. Half the time, the survivor is more successful or more intelligent. But in the narcissist's world, in their eyes and their abuse and their abusive language, they will tell you your opinion doesn't matter because other people's are more valid. And they'll point out who and why and what's more important and what's more valid than the opinion you're expressing. So in other words, they don't allow your opinion in because it's not worthy. And they set that up. And that is just completely wrong. And you can see right there, it is so one-sided that it's so obviously not you, it is completely them. An interesting point is that the silent treatment can silence you. You may feel like the silent treatment created hysteria, it created noise from you, it created a reaction. You may feel like it made you louder than you ever used to be or, you know, because you're trying to engage them and you're trying to get their attention back and you're trying to get their focus back onto you and you're trying to get them to just talk to you. But really, the, what it did is shut down the situation. It completely cut off the issue you were trying to bring up, the discussion you were trying to have, shifted the focus away from it so that it silenced your need to feel, to feel heard. It silenced your need to be heard. It silenced what you were saying. It silenced anything that mattered to you in that situation. And, and then all the noise and all the hysteria and whatever came out of it in you 
if that is what happened to you, if some people get silent as well, but, and that's another one, they can make you silent with the silence because then there's nothing left to say. But it cuts off all communication. So right there, the silent treatment silences you. And then the other part is you become afraid to speak because you're afraid they'll leave. And because you're trauma bonded, that matters. People who are given the silent treatment when they're trauma bonded and they're very fearful of the narcissist discarding them, really, they won't say anything because the silent treatment is like a giant warning that the narcissist is going to take off. When you are not able to speak your emotions, when you're crying and there's no compassion at all, when there's no when there's no one saying, what is wrong? Are you okay? Can I help you? What, what's happening? What's, what's going on with you? Are you? When there's no one even concerned for the reason you're upset, it silences you. It completely shuts off your voice and it makes it stay on the inside. Enough of that and years of that and with enough time, that becomes a habit. It becomes a groomed behavior that becomes a pattern within you. And it can be tricky to break that. You have to learn to use your voice again and learn to trust that people do care. And you have to learn to care about yourself most of all. And if that's the case where you're just completely shut down and you have feel like you can't express yourself to anyone, it, that's a great time to seek a counselor, therapist, or a life coach to talk about these things with and just have the experience of a caring person listening to you. That can restore a little bit of your voice. And as you learn to use your voice, it starts to come back. This comment I liked a lot because it's very descriptive. I felt like I was being trained like a dog, punished for bad behavior and rewarded for good. I rarely spoke up unless it involved the kids. Swept everything under the rug and pretended like whatever it was didn't happen or wasn't a big deal. The reward punishment, it's, you know, it goes hand in hand with the black and white thinking of a narcissist. Yeah, the manipulative control that goes in, again, back to control, 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 as the other person said, where the fear of setting them off is greater than the discomfort and pain of being silenced. And right there, that says toxic relationship. There is nothing healthy about that at all in any shape or form and in any world. So, I mean, you know, you know this, this is why you're writing this and, and I'm glad you're able to express it. I mean, I think that the ability for everybody who expressed these comments to me and went on to have further discussions about it and are willing to look at this piece is a huge step for you in your healing because you're using your voice, you're using the thing that was shut down and stifled and completely stepped on and buried to now speak about it and break free from the silence. Let's take our voices back and let's start to experience our own lives from our own perspectives and know that we're valid. You guys can do it. You can, you can gain some awareness on where you were silenced and you can find your voice again. It's a, it's a journey and it's a process and it's totally possible and the healing is there. You just need to focus your attention inward, focus your attention on self-care, and move forward with your healing through gaining support, getting support of others, joining support groups like SPAN, seek coaching if you need it. There's group coaching available. I will put a link at the end of this video for, some, for a group that might be really helpful for people experiencing this. And individual coaching, there's therapists and peer support, as I said. So, so I hope that was helpful and I will see you next time. Hi, I'm Lise Colucci, one of the life coaches at Queen Bean. I'm offering a five week self-care focused group coaching opportunity. We meet in a video chat on Tuesdays once a week at either 11 a.m. or 6 p.m. Pacific. And we also have a very active messenger group that we chat in throughout the week to give updates and ask questions and give support to one another in the group. Self-care with healing, in my opinion, is one of the most important and useful things you can do to 
reduce the amount of time that you suffer and increase the amount of healing that you experience in a shorter amount of time. So to find out what that means personally for you, I try to work with people individually within the group to hear their stories and to see where they're in their own way, to see where they're blocking their own growth and to see where they potentially are sabotaging their own healing and offer ideas and suggestions as well as help them to find their own inner wisdom for how to heal and how to become a more positive influence in their own life. This has been a really great group so far, and I'm really excited to start the next five weeks, and I hope you will join me because the healing is tremendous and the support is incredible, and you will meet some amazing people along the way, as well as get individual attention and coaching. All the information is below. If you have any questions, leave a comment or email me or free to reach out. Information on how to contact me is below as well. And that about sums it up. See you soon.